Chapter 8. The Universe Speaks in Mysterious Ways In 2008, I went on a spiritual quest with my mother to Brazil to visit the medium John of God. John of God channels spirits to facilitate miraculous healing and spiritual growth. My primary intention for visiting Brazil was simply to accompany my mother on her wild journey. I didn't want her traveling all the way to Brazil alone. But deep down, I intuitively knew I was meant to be there. The night before we visited John of God, our tour guide suggested that we get clear about the healing and guidance we wanted to receive. I remember sitting in my dimly lit room in the Brazilian Posada, writing down my intentions in my journal. At the top of the page, I wrote this. I want to truly know God so that I can be free and teach with authenticity. My next intention for my visit with John of God was to receive support with my book, Add More Ing to Your Life. At the time, I didn't even have a publisher, but I was writing the book anyway because I wanted to bring my spiritual experiences to an audience of new seekers. I wrote down in my journal, Thank you, Spirit, for guiding me to the right literary partners who can support spreading my message throughout the world. The next day, I brought my intentions to John of God and received his blessing. Throughout my time in Brazil, I met some incredible people, one of whom was a lovely tour group shaman named Heather Cumming. Heather was also John of God's interpreter. At the time she was finishing the book, John of God, the Brazilian healer who's touched the lives of millions. Also in my group was Setsuko, a Japanese woman who translated spiritual books. Setsuko was in our tour group to experience John of God and meet with Heather so that she could translate Heather's book into Japanese. Throughout my two-week experience in Brazil, Setsuko and I had many conversations about the literary world. I told her all about my book and how I was ready to receive a publisher. While she didn't know me at all, she felt a strange certainty that my book would have an impact on the world. The day we left Brazil to head home, Setsuko said to me, Good luck with your book. I hope to translate it into Japanese someday. I smiled and thanked her for her generosity and support. Within a few months of visiting John of God, I landed the publishing deal I'd been hoping for. I finished and published my book within four months, an incredibly fast turnaround, and I trusted that the universe was ready to make it happen. Six months later, my book was published. I was visiting the Omega Center, a spiritual center in Rhinebeck, New York. I was having lunch with an Italian friend of mine who was looking for work as a book translator. He asked, Do you know anyone in the translation field? I said, I only know one woman, Satsuko, who lives in Japan. I wouldn't even know how to get in touch with her, but I'll look into it. Fifteen minutes later, we headed to the Omega Cafe for tea. As I walked up the steps to the gift shop, I bumped into a man and a woman walking down the steps. I looked up, and it was Satsuko. I yelped, I was just talking about you. What on earth are you doing in the United States? She said, I can't believe I'm seeing you here. I just bought your book in the bookstore, and I was so proud of your accomplishment. Satsuko and I sat down for tea and caught up. Within minutes, she said, I know the universe has guided me to you so that I can translate your book into Japanese. I'll bring this to my editor and see if we can make it happen. With great gratitude, we celebrated the universal guidance and headed our separate ways. This was a wonderful encounter, plus my Italian friend made an awesome connection and received guidance for working in the field of translation. Three months later, I accepted my first Japanese offer for Add More Ing to Your Life, and Setsuko was the translator. Since that time, she's bid on my other books, and who knows, maybe she'll translate this one too. The synchronicity behind this event serves as another powerful reminder that the universe guides us wherever we focus our energy and intention. When we surrender our intentions and feel energized by the infinite possibilities, we will be amazed by how fast the universe responds. You may have experienced these types of undeniable synchronicities in your own life. Maybe you think about a loved one and they call you just as you pick up the phone to dial them. You say something casually and an hour later it happens. It's likely these moments come and go and when they do you're amazed because you can't actually believe it. In some ways it seems too good to be true. You may chalk it up to coincidence, but in truth it's much, much more. These synchronicities are the universe's way of guiding you to exactly what you need. When you tap into the loving frequency of the universe, you learn to live beyond the limitations of the world and accept good orderly direction. 
You surrender your obsession with logic and embrace intuitive direction. You become aware of the great support within you and around you. My goal in this chapter is to help you fully embrace and surrender to this support from the universe as I show you how to practice using your intentions and connection for the highest good. Step 1. Understand that miracles are natural. When we get in sync with the universe, we begin to experience many miraculous and mysterious synchronicities. These synchronicities may seem wild and unexplainable at first, but the more faithful you become, the more commonly they occur. A Course in Miracles teaches us, miracles are natural. When they do not occur, something has gone wrong. What's natural is our peaceful, loving instinct and our connection to the love of the universe. What's unnatural is the fear that defends against this connection. Fear, along with guilt, separation, judgment, and attack, block us from the miracles that are available to us all the time. When we believe in the love of the universe and allow it to move through us, we are a clear channel to receive great gifts and guidance. When synchronicity does not occur and we don't feel guided, it's a clear sign that we've fallen back into our fearful patterns. Our spiritual journey is an experience of remembering that we are love. The more we embody this truth, the more miracles we will experience. We accept that miracles are a natural part of who we are. And when we live in love, we live a miraculous life. Now, I don't expect you to become enlightened overnight and live in love all the time, but let's aim to bring in more love. When the light shines, the darkness cannot coexist with it. It's time to ignite your light and let it shine brightly so that you can own, honor, and embrace your true connection to the universe. Continue to pay close attention to when you're blocking miracles, and in that instant, choose again. Step 2. Look for love and expect miracles. This next step is to spend mindful moments throughout the day looking for love. When you deliberately focus your attention on love and joy, then you open the floodgates to receive miracles. Most of us get caught up in focusing on what's going wrong. But what if we spent our days looking at all that's going right? Make a conscious effort to look for love throughout the day. To ignite this process, begin your day with a prayer. I focus my attention on the love that is around me, and I expect miracles. Repeat this prayer and feel the power of these words. Know that your willingness to say these words out loud will set you on the right foot. When you look for love, you proactively collaborate with the universe to bring you back to a miracle mindset. Remember, a simple shift in your perception is a miracle. The moment that you forgive your spouse and move on from a stupid argument is a miracle. Or when you ask for a sign from the universe and you get it, it's a miracle. Miracles can be wild synchronicities or they can be simple shifts. The Course says there is no order of difficulty among miracles. It's important to celebrate these miracles by saying thank you to the universe. Thanking the universe reinforces your faith and trust that you're in sync with a power greater than yourself. Remember that your relationship with the universe is an ongoing conversation. The best conversations begin with the words, thank you. Step 3. Practice non-interference. Pay attention to how your day shifts when you commit to love. The Course says, you need not do anything. You don't need to work miracles or make anything happen. You merely align with your true love nature and allow your eyes to see what you desire. The Course teaches that miracles are habits and should be involuntary. They should not be under conscious control, but consciously selected miracles can be misguided. With this important message, the Course reminds us to turn inward and ask for help whenever we disconnect from our miracle mindset. Miracles become involuntary when we make turning to love a habit. When we detour into fear, we can call on the universe to help us restore our thoughts back to love. Whenever we ask for help, the miracle will be presented. We don't need to do anything other than be receptive to the guidance that comes. This relaxed relationship with the universe gives us the chance to be at peace. Universal Lesson Whenever we forget our peaceful nature, we can ask the universe to remind us of what is real. I once led a weekend workshop at a retreat center for a large group of people. The group opened up quickly and shared a lot of their fears and stories throughout the weekend. Following the retreat, I drove back home with my friend Jenny and chatted about the weekend. Jenny said that while she really enjoyed the weekend, she was feeling a bit down because of all the sad stories and energy she had picked up from others. 
She also told me that for many months she'd been having trouble sleeping because of her fears about world events and some recent personal experiences. She felt paralyzed by fear. I took in what she said and suggested that she may not be creating clear energy boundaries with people and the world. I reminded her that through prayer she could be guided to a healing of the highest good. I suggested that she relax into prayer, trusting that whatever she needed would be presented to her. We said a prayer. I am love and miracles are natural. I welcome healing of the highest good. Moments after the prayer, I remembered a beautiful energy clearing meditation by a spiritual teacher named Doreen Virtue. I frequently use Doreen's meditation to clear out any fear, negative energy, or psychic attacks. I told Jenny about it, and she replied, That sounds cool. Send me the link when we get home. Ten minutes later, we were listening to a mix on my Spotify account. Then out of nowhere... Light instrumental music started playing, and Doreen Virtue's voice came through the stereo. It was the energy clearing meditation. This meditation wasn't on my Spotify playlist, and I didn't even know that it was saved in my iTunes. We started screaming with excitement. The exact healing that she needed came through faster than she could even imagine. She looked at me and said, wow, I didn't even have to work for that. Miracles are natural. Then she shut her eyes and listened to the meditation. Coming out of the meditation, Jenny felt clear, energized, and released the negativity and tension she had been holding. When you pray, you get out of the way. Making prayer a daily practice will help you feel the flow of synchronicity and universal support all the time. Your connection to the universe will be present in all things. You'll think of something and it will appear. You'll set an intention and it will come into form. Practice your faith like a full-time job and try not to interfere with the universe's plan. Your faith and non-interference will make you feel relaxed. That relaxed state is the portal to receive universal guidance. Universal Lesson As long as you remain surrendered and committed to the highest good, everything you need will be shown to you. Step 4. Heighten your faith. The next step in co-creating with the universe is to create a faith statement. This exercise begins with a question. What would your life be like if you knew you were always being guided? Take a moment to free write your response. What would you do differently if you knew that the universe had your back? Do you have spiritual proof that the universe is in fact guiding you? Write your story. If you don't have proof yet, you will by the time you complete this book. Feel free to revisit this lesson later. Feel the faithful energy that this story ignites. If you don't have your own spiritual proof, it's fine to lean on someone else's story or any of the stories in this book. Take a few moments to tap into the feelings of faith that these stories ignite. How does it feel to be in faith? What does your faith give you the freedom to do or be? Now let's create a faith statement. This statement helps you access your commitment to the universe and the positive co-creation of your life. The goal is to make a faith statement that ignites a feeling of love, connection, and inspiration within you. This statement can be whatever you want it to be. My faith statement is, I know that the universe is an ever-present energy field of love. I know that when I align with the energy of love through thoughts, actions, and beliefs, I am given infinite support and guidance. I know that I can co-create my reality with this loving presence so that I can live in joy and spread light. Reading this statement out loud moves me to tears. That's the goal. Write a faith statement that moves you from your core. Use some of what you've already written down in your responses above and write a statement that locks you into a heart-centered state of faith in the universe. Write your faith statement and don't edit a word. Write down whatever comes out. Don't judge what you write and don't try to make it perfect. Just let it flow. You can always expand upon your faith statement, so don't feel stuck in what you write. Step 5. Commit to your faith statement. Now that you have a faith statement, it's time to have some fun. For the next 24 hours, commit to living in faith. Begin now by reading your faith statement out loud to yourself, followed by this mantra. I trust in my connection to the universe, and I have faith I'm being guided. For the next 24 hours, walk through life leaning on your faith in the universe. When something feels in sync, celebrate it as a moment of alignment. When something goes wrong, recognize it as a detour in the right direction, offering you guidance and support. Choose to see all that occurs as loving guidance. 
Forgive your negative thoughts and actions and immediately return to your faith statement. If the thought of relying on your faith intimidates or overwhelms you, remember, this should be fun. It's a radical and awesome experiment in what it's like to live with trust in the universe and a commitment to love. Just for today, let's see how it feels to lean toward faith and love no matter what. At the end of the 24-hour period, take some time to reflect on your experience. In your notebook, take an inventory of the miracle moments and write down an honest intake of when you resisted the support of the universe. If you enjoyed this exercise, keep it going. Continue to test drive your faith daily. Have fun with the practice of getting in sync with the universe. If your spiritual practice feels like work, then it becomes another thing to cross off your to-do list. The more playful and curious you are on your spiritual path, the more synchronicity you will witness. Co-create your experience with a sense of joy and an open mind. Savor the journey. While you complete this exercise, you'll get a glimpse of freedom that is available to you now. Committing to 24 hours of freedom is easy because you know that the next day you can go back to controlling and worrying. As much as you don't like it, you probably feel safe there. But my hope is that you'll find so much joy in your 24-hour experiment that you'll turn to it more often, even if it's for short periods of time. Let this practice become part of your spiritual routine. Give yourself freedom breaks from the chaos you create in your mind and your reality. These breaks can be a reprieve from all that you think you need to make and all that you think you need to control. Know that you can take an inner vacation whenever you choose, letting in light to allow your creative energy to come forth and attract you to what you desire. When you take time off from your chaotic and fearful ways, you begin to create new experiences. The fleeting moments of freedom you experience can be very powerful. They are pinpricks of light in the midst of vast darkness. The more often you allow the light to come in, the safer it feels to be free from the darkness. Fear is a habit, and this practice will guide you to make love a new habit and in time will outweigh the pressure of fear. Bring this practice into your moment-to-moment -moment experiences. Stay in the flow with love. Each day, set positive intentions for yourself. Intend to be more loving to your partner. Intend to have a productive work day. Intend to eat more mindfully, and so on. When you set positive intentions, you send a clear message to the universe that you're ready to receive support. Your work is done. All you have to do then is be patient, have fun, and believe in miracles. Practicing these principles doesn't mean that you won't have problems. Conflicts are also a natural part of life, and when dealt with from a place of love, incredible opportunities for learning and growth. And when you commit to this practice, you will experience problems differently. Instead of freaking out, getting frustrated, or trying to force an outcome, your habitual response will be to lean on the universe for help. You can ask the universe to reveal to you the great lessons in each problem and remind you to return to love. The more you practice the habit of leaning on a miracle mindset, the faster your comeback rate will be. The faster you come back, the happier and more peaceful you will become. Of course, it's easy to accept that we can co-create the good stuff. But what about the obstacles? What about when you're fired out of the blue or when an unexpected health condition shows up? How are we co-creating these difficult circumstances in our lives? The bad times, just like the good, are a reflection of what we believe to be true about ourselves and our relationship to the universe. Oftentimes, our difficult circumstances reflect the stress, fear, and separation that we carry. It's important to witness the difficult situations in our life through the lens of love. Choose to see them as an opportunity to surrender to your spiritual practice even more. The amount of flow and synchronicity we experience can be measured by the depth of our spiritual connection. The guidance you desire in any area of life may come quickly or it may take time. And really, the timeline doesn't matter. In fact, time is irrelevant when you're working miracles. Just stay in the flow and believe. When I reunited with Satsuko and secured the Japanese deal, there was a part of me that wasn't even surprised. My trust in love and my commitment to miracles gave me the strong faith that this manifestation was in perfect alignment with the highest good. The Japanese deal came at the perfect time for the book and for Satsuko. The universe had a plan for us, and we cleared the path to receive it. Stay committed to love and get out of the way. That's the gig, folks. It really is that simple. This empowered way of living is available to you right now. 
Journeying through life, co-creating your reality with the universe is immensely fulfilling. Living in collaboration with the universe can change your entire life. Let's continue your journey of heightening your faith so that you can begin to fully embrace your relationship with the universe. Here's your recap of the steps. Miracles are natural. Let the universe support you. Look for love in all the right places by repeating this prayer throughout the day. I focus my attention on the love that is around me and I expect miracles. Practice non-interference. Miracles are habits and should be involuntary. Create your faith statement. Commit to your faith statement and recite it throughout the day. Your faith will be your greatest resource as we move into chapter nine. In the coming pages, I invite you to begin the process of undoing fear and fully surrendering to the grace and love of the universe. Some of what I ask may seem challenging, but lean on your faith statement and we will clear the path to freedom and peace. Chapter nine, oneness sets you free. Six months into the process,